G'day guys. So it's been uh, six weeks since we have done our last cycle and uh, we're on a new one. So congratulations to everyone who smashed out the total and smashed out PR friends and um, you know all that cool stuff that we did last week. I'm really pumped to see the results. I haven't actually had a look at the official numbers yet but I'm sure I saw lots of gold stars last week so I'm sure that'd be awesome. So over the next six weeks, I've got our programming right here and you can try and freeze frame it and look at it all if you want, but it's in my handwriting. So we all know that's pretty bad. Um, so we're going to work towards the other total, uh, which is the clean bench overhead squat lift. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of other bits and pieces that we're going to look towards. I'm going to be looking down a lot at my cheat sheet, although I could probably put it there now. I'll just look down, it's directly underneath the phone. Okay, so we've got a good fun workouts to work out, uh, to work towards. Um, you know, simple CrossFit style ones, nothing too crazy. Um, pretty lower skill base, um, minus that overhead squat um, with our stuff. So we're going to try and dial back the skill a little bit, um, or maybe focus the skill a bit more, actually, not dial it back. We're pretty, pretty high skill at CrossFit Bowen. Um, but we're going to follow a similar format. I thought it worked really well for the last six weeks. That's uh, ash in my hair and probably dandruff, who knows. Um, but I like the format of the last six weeks. I had a lot of good uh, feedback from that. So we're going to do the same thing in uh, the next six weeks. So we're going to roll with the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there'll be a strength day. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, there'll be a strength day. The only thing I did change is I didn't put any of the strength days on the Saturday. So it'll be either Thursday, Friday. Okay, and I just move backwards and forwards between Thursday and Friday. So uh, it's Thursday this week, so Friday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday. Um, and then we're back into test week again anyway. Um, and then the other one we did is we're going to do, because this cycle falls within the new, the uh, open. So if you haven't signed up already, which I haven't, but I will be. <laughs> um, we're going to try it out on the Friday night this time around. We did the Saturday earlier in the year. And uh, we're going to try the Friday and we're going to see which one works better. Um, I like the Friday personally, but we'll see how we go. So we've got two strength days that we're going to repeat five times of each. And then every three day block, we're also going to do a conditioning EMOM as well. So I really like the EMOMs forces people to move on the minute. Whereas if you're not doing an EMOM, you can, uh, you know, stand around for 30 seconds without doing anything. So even if we're dumping reps um, during the EMOM, then that's fine. Okay, we want to we want to just keep moving. We always want to scale back to our abilities. So, for example, one of the imams has muscle ups and double unders within the same minute, which will be a theme that you come across a lot. Not so much muscle ups and double unders, but movements within the same minute. Okay, and then we will uh, try and transition training between them two because usually most of the rest happens when you finish an exercise and then go to the next one. But for this, we don't want to do that. We want to finish, go to the next exercise, and then if we have to break then you would break it up. But a lot of the time you just need to back yourself in, um, do the exercise and then see what happens type of thing. Here comes Tony. <laughs> okay, so we've got our two strength days I figured I'd tell you. One is tomorrow, so we're starting off. Strength day, so strength day A, which is working on uh, front squats. Um. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go to a box. Um, which is pretty unusual for a front squat, but we really want to try and develop that bottom position. And the box will be as low as you can get it. So not even a box. If you want to use like the 12 inch boxes, that's fine. But I would use something even lower, maybe a couple fat plates on there. Um, going for something real simple with dropping the volume a little bit. We went sevens for the back squat and we're going to go fives for this front squat simply because the weight or the positions will be a lot harder. Um, and then five sets and we're going to superset that with <laughs> with uh, some jumping work cool so notice a lot of people um, struggling with jumping and that the the how much force they can produce in the ground very quickly so I've got a bit of a progression there it's a bit complicated but it starts off with a bench jump so like a seated seated box jump if you will then it's going to go into a depth jump or a death jump, depending on uh, what text you're reading, which is basically where you're going to jump or, or, sorry, fall off something, hit the ground and then rebound straight away. So our fall is very minimal because you always hear me say uh, the point of jumping on a box is to not land uh, from a big height. Okay, so we're going to 
fall from a small height, which is kind of like jumping on a box anyway, and then hit the ground and rebound. So this is all about producing more force quicker, okay, and, and getting the tendons a bit more elastic. Now, that is a progression, okay? So if we need to have some pretty high jumping ability before you can get to that. And then if you can get to the uh, depth junks at 40 inches for the fellas and 33 for the ladies, then we can move on to rebounding hurdles. But not many people are going to get to that, to be honest. It's a pretty, um, pretty high impact movement. Um, and it's a pretty hard progression to get there. So, and I've deliberately made it that way because not everyone should be doing that type of stuff. So we'll start off with our bench jumps or seated, seated box jumps first, and then we can progress through that. Everything's in there. Um, and then we've got a fun finisher in there that's throwing in wall sits because wall sits keep the knees healthy, okay, keep you under tension and keep everything moving. Cool. I'll uh, let you see the what in an hour or so, whenever this uploads, okay, 7.30 fr Sunday night. <clears throat> Strength day B, so that'll be our, uh, basically our front squat clean type strength work. Okay, that'll work towards that other total. And then strength day B is going to be the overhead squat bench day. So we've got a bench progression. We've got five different sets, descending uh, reps and ascending weight, hopefully. Okay, and start off conservative. I haven't put any uh, prescription in there. I think maybe or even, I think I threw in 60% is a good start for 10, but that's about right. It's only one set. Okay, and then we'll progress up from there. Um, and we're going to superset that with uh, box step-ups. Okay, so getting that unilateral movement front or left-right stuff uh, organized. But we're also going to do them with the bar in the overhead squat position. Okay, or the snatch position depending on your position. Okay, so some people I know have pretty, pretty tight shoulders. So they'll have to go real wide. And some people have great shoulder mobility. So they'll go a bit closer and be able to get into a bit more. So... An overhead box step up. Now, a lot of people are going to be stuck with just the bar for a very long time with this, um, simply because the position is very demanding on the torso, very demanding on the shoulders, very demanding on the hips. Okay, it's a hard, hard position. So if you can't even do this with a bar, like even the eight kilo bar, don't even stress. I had a go at it, of course, before we started. And I first go through, I was like, wow, this is really hard with just a bar. So it could even be PVC for a lot of people. And you can just hook on a little plate um, on your bar to uh, you know, go two kilos or something like that. Okay, and then we've got a little AMRAP to finish there. Very open-esque on that one. Just a bit of posterior chain work, nothing too crazy. Little seven minute finisher. Cool, so that's our strength work. Moving on to the, oh, I'll flip on the rack around the other way. A couple things we're gonna work on. A lot. I've talked to a lot of people over the last six weeks. Everybody says they wanna get better at muscle ups, pull ups, or some sort of pulling variation. So I figure here's what we're going to do. Every single day that's not a strength day, okay, so that would be four days a week, we are going to finish the class with a five-minute EMOM of pull-ups. Cool. Now, if that's kipping or strict, okay, either is fine, or two different variations. If you haven't got pull-ups yet, you could do like banded strict, or you could go chin over bar holds, and then the other time you could do banded kipping. Banded kipping is a good one to just develop the skill and the timing. Okay, and then we're just going to alternate backwards and forwards. So it'll be up to you guys. I've put it as an RX Plus option. So you can put in, like, let's say, uh, let's say I want to scale, right? So I'm going to go, not R I want to scale it for one set. Okay, so I won't put RX. And the next set, I'll put RX. And then towards the end of the time, if I'm getting strict pull-ups, I can put that in as my RX Plus. Like, whatever you want, just as long as you can keep track of the record. Excuse my shaky hands. Okay. So that'll be the end of every class. So no matter what the workout, even if the workout's pull-ups, there'll still be a five-minute AMRAP, or EMOM, sorry, of pull-ups. So for example, this Friday, there's pull-ups. Sorry, this Saturday, apologies. Friday, we're closed. Public holiday. Saturday, there's pull-ups in the workout. Okay, so they'll be kipping pull-ups. So we'll do it, like, most likely, it would be a good idea to do a strict pull-up one in that. But whatever you're up to, okay? You can always do more strict pull-ups. Um, kipping pull-ups, on the other hand, can ruin your hands a little bit. And then finally, the other bit we're going to try and really work towards, and this is going to be high repetition stuff, okay, twice a week you'll be working on each one of these, will be postural work A and B, or however I uh, word it in Waterfly, I can't remember. Okay, and we're working on a couple things. One is getting the shoulders away from the ears when people pull, okay, so when people do pull-ups, if I demonstrate, people try to shrug, okay, and then they pull and they end up here and they wonder why they can never get chest bars, because they can't get their shoulders away from the bar. Oh, it's away from their ears, sorry. So we're going to do a bit of work on that. Kind of simple. It'll be straight after you have a bit of warm-up. We'll just jump into that. And it also makes for a nice little warm-up for a lot of workouts. And the other one is the 
Opposite to that, we're going to work on a lot of rotation of the shoulder. So you notice myself, there's quite a few other people who can like internally rotate their shoulders above their head, okay, which requires us to have more range of motion in the shoulder, but it is less stable. So we're going to do a bunch of work on the stability of that, okay, working with uh, you know, a whole bunch of external rotation, internal rotation, you'll see. Um, and we're going to superset that back with our hinge rows because hinge rows are probably the best exercise for strengthening your shoulders because it puts you in such a compromised position. So if you're strong there, you'll be strong in the uh, other progression. The first one I said that the, the postural work A, I guess, I think I've called it, what did I call it? I can't remember. Anyway, it would be Tuesday, whichever one that is. Okay, there's actually a little gymnastics progression in there too, just working with that, um, that ability to move the shoulder blades around the body, working towards a planche, which is like a skill that is 10 years away from probably where any of us are, but doesn't mean we can't train that skill. So we might be able to get towards the planche, wherever we, um, you know, whatever lesson we're up to. I'm pretty sure no one's going to nail it in six weeks, you know, but who knows, someone might, someone with huge lats and very small legs might be able to do it. So not naming names, but they know who they are. Cool. Other than that, looks like it's gonna be a bit of fun. So we're gonna go back, basically our same format. Strength day and EMOM, a workout. Okay, and we're just gonna move backwards and forwards between those three things. Um, so for example, this week is strength day Monday, EMOM Tuesday, workout Wednesday. It's got a ring to it. Strength day Thursday, and then we're closed on Friday, but it would have been an EMOM. And then Saturday, we're doing a fantastic workout that is time-based. Okay, so it's three rounds of time of blah, blah, blah. Cool. And then EMOMs can also include things like death buys. Um, I've got like a two-minute EMOM in there, you know, a whole bunch of different stuff um, through the movement. So it should be good fun. Um, I'm looking forward to this one. I might jump on board this one with you guys. Like, I'm going to try and hit... I'm going to try and... I might... The goal will be to try and hit every every class this five weeks, just for a bit of fun. Usually I only do like three classes a week uh, myself, um, but I'm trying to do a bit more. I've got a bit more time on my hands, so um, that should be good. And yeah, this is we're going to push in four weeks into the Open, um, so there'll only be one week. So haven't put a lot of thrusters in, but there is a lot of front squats and a lot of pressing, so hopefully that will translate, plus all the other conditioning as well. So anyway... So if you've got any questions, guys, just hit me up. You know where I am. Uh, don't hit me on Facebook. It'll take me forever to reply to that. But text me um, or call me. I don't give a shit. Or talk to me at the gym. That would be awesome. Sweet. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow.